The Melba Story. The story of Australia's most famous woman. The true story, fully authenticated, and featuring another wonderful Australian singer, Glenda Raymond. The Melba Story. On the night of Melba's operatic debut at Brussels, on the night of Thursday, October the 13th, 1887, her husband, Charles Armstrong, made a special trip from Ireland to attend the performance. After the final curtain, however, she returned to her dressing room to be told by her teacher, Madame Marchese, that Charles had gone forever. He couldn't have meant it. He was joking. He was always fond of a joke. He's hiding somewhere, madame, isn't he? Nelly. Come out, Charles. You mustn't ever do that again. Nelly. He must be here. He must be. He thought it was better so, my dear. But why? Why? There are men who are content to follow, and there are those who must lead. Your Charles is one of these. And tonight he saw into the future, and he knew there was no place for him in the life that awaits you. Charles. My poor one, you must have courage. Oh, Charles. Go away, away. Madame Melba cannot see anyone at present. She had better see me. Who are you? What do you mean by bursting in here like this? I have closed the door because I think you would not like the world to hear what I have to say. If you do not leave this dressing room immediately, I will have you thrown out. Ah, no, Madame Marchese. I do not think you will do that. Nelly, do you know this woman? No, I've never seen her before. But I have seen you before. What do you mean? I wish to speak to you alone. Why? Because it will be better for you. Nelly, tell her to go. No, Madame. I think I'll listen to what she has to say. Do you mind leaving us for a few minutes? Nelly! Don't go far away. I'll call you if necessary. Well, for two minutes, then. Do you hear? Two minutes will be long enough. I'll be just outside the door, Nelly. Thank you, madame. Now, what have you to say to me? Only that I am in a position to expose you. Expose me? Yes. Your little game has been successful so far. But a word from me could ruin everything. I don't know what you're talking about. I think you do. If you don't explain yourself, I shall ask you to go. And if I refuse? Then I'll send for someone to make you go. And cause a scandal. How? Suppose I reveal the truth. That you are an imposter. Imposter? Oh, you must be mad. No, no. I happen to know the facts, you see. What facts? That this is not your operatic debut. I beg your pardon. It is no use pretending to be innocent. I heard you sing in Italy. I've never been to Italy in my life. Not as Madame Melba. You used a different name then. A name you now wish to forget. Oh. I will not allow you to go on with this deception. Madame Marchese! You will regret this. I will make a scandal. I will have you thrown out of Brussels. Nelly, here is the chief director. He will know how to handle this. I regret, Madame Melba, that you should be subjected to such an indignity. It is not the first time this woman has offended. You know her, Mr. La I do indeed. She is an unsuccessful aspirant for operatic honors. And makes a habit of threatening those who have been more fortunate than herself. You are lying. This time, however, she has gone too far. So she must be handed over to the police. Uh, no, no. Please, Mr. Lapacida, don't do that. Just let her go. Oh, madame, this is not to be treated lightly. Please. I'm sure she'll never do it again. Well. You won't worry me anymore, will you? Come, come, you must go. No, come on, no. Poor creature. 
Already, you see, you begin to pay the penalties of success. You mean Charles and now this? From now on, my dear, your life will not be your own. It will belong to the world. And the world will sometimes be very harsh. And there will be jealousies, quarrels, lies. You will be accused of every kind of enormity, every kind of folly. Your slightest indiscretion will be magnified a thousandfold. And if there are no indiscretions, they will soon be manufactured. Every famous person must face these things. They are the inevitable accompaniments to greatness. Is that all I can look for? If that was so, who would try to excel? Oh, no, 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 my dear. You will have your compensations. You will be admired, adored, even idolized. Your slightest wish will be gratified, and the world will kneel at your feet. But you will sometimes wish to be yourself again, and wonder whether it was all worthwhile. But in my heart, I shall know that if I had my life all over again, I'd make the same choice. All right, madame. If success brings its sorrows, I must make the best of its joys. That is right. So it's goodbye, then, to Nellie Armstrong. From now on, I'm just... Melba. for you, Nelly. Oh, uh, read it to me, please. My hands are covered with makeup. Very well, my dear. Just another telegram of congratulation, I suppose. No, indeed it is not. It is from Augustus Harris, the chief director of the Covent Garden Opera House in London. He offers you an immediate engagement. Show me. There you are. Read it for yourself. He asks me to come to London at once. Oh, that, of course, is impossible. Impossible? Why? You forget, perhaps, that you have two more performances this week? No, I haven't forgotten. Then how could you possibly consider going to London? Oh, that's easily arranged, madame. I shall simply ask Mr. La Pacida to cancel the two remaining performances. You think he will agree to that? Of course. He's a most obliging person. Yes, but not to the extent of losing your services for two nights. I am sure he will not even consider such a suggestion. All right. I'll ask him tomorrow. Where? I have promised to sing at a charity concert, and Mr. La is going to be there. You see, he'll agree to anything I say. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Madame Melba will sing songs my mother taught me.
How is that, Mr. La Pacita? Your voice is as perfect as ever, madame. But it would appear that you have taken leave of your senses. What do you mean? Is it true that you intend to leave for London tomorrow? Oh, yes. I wanted to talk to you about that. Oh, you wanted to talk to me about it. How nice. How very considerate. Another woman would have gone off without a word. Oh, thank you, madame. You are most thoughtful. Mr. La Pacida, you're not angry with me, are you? Uh, no, my dear. I realize that you do not understand the true position. What position? That you are in honor bound to finish the season here at Brussels. Oh. But you can put on my understudy, can't you? Or better still, why not change the opera? I do not want to change the opera. I do not want to put on your understudy. I want you, madame. I'm sorry, but it's impossible. I couldn't refuse a chance like this. It's Covent Garden, you see. You will not sing at Covent Garden. But I've already sent a telegram to Mr. Harris accepting his offer. Madame. <laughs> but don't worry. I'll be back here next year. Let me just ask you this, madame. What happens if you fail in London? Oh, but I won't. I know I won't. I'm leaving for London this very night. Very well. Have your way. But remember what I say. That before long, you will be wanted neither in Brussels nor London. In just a moment, we'll return to the Melbourne story. Melba story. Mr. Augustus Harris? Yes. Good morning. I'm Madame Melba. I'm so happy to meet you, madame. I've heard great things about your performance in Brussels, and I'm looking forward to your repeating them in London. Thank you. And uh, what do you think of our cotton garden? Well, it's rather different from the Théâtre de la Monnaie. <laughs> You're not impressed by our shabby appearance. Well, the approach to the opera, that vegetable market... Oh, it is as famous as the opera house itself. Indeed, it is part of it. But the magic of Cotton Garden lies deeper than the eye can see, madame. Many great figures have strutted every far on this stage. Yes, I know, but... but... You'll soon forget the feeling that you're in a great fruit store. You will become a part of Cotton Garden, too. A part of its great tradition. Now then, let me see. Uh, you will make your first appearance on May the 24th. Uh, that is the Queen's birthday. I appreciate the honor. And who is to sing the part of Rigoletto? Oh, I'm afraid you won't be doing that opera, madame. What then? I suggest uh, Lucia di Lamour. But I'd much rather sing Gilda than any other part. I did that at Brussels, you know. Uh, so I understand, but here at Covent Garden, you see, Madame Albani has the right to that role. I see. Albani makes her choice, and I must take what she leaves. No, no, but Madame Albani is the reigning star, whereas you are as yet unknown in England. Uh, but after this season, who knows? It may be that Melba will rule at Covent Garden. Is that so unthinkable, Mr. Harris? Let us say, um, rather unlikely. Oh, but you are young, my dear. You have plenty of time. Can you start rehearsing tomorrow? Well, Madam Melba... How are the rehearsals progressing? Not very well, I'm afraid, Mr. Harris. How's that? I don't seem to be getting much help. From whom? From anyone. The other artists, the producer, the conductor. Have they been rude to you? Not in anything they've actually said to me. On the other hand, they've all been most polite. Well, then... Uh... I need more than politeness, Mr. Harris. I need all the help I can get. This is something new to me. I hadn't expected to sing Lucia. Uh, but you know the part, don't you? Learned it by now, I think. You've never sung it before? I've never even seen the opera. Oh, dear. Will you be all right? I hope so. Well, it's too late to make a change now. Uh, we'll just have to hope for the best.
Well, that's one act over and no accidents. How do you feel, madame? Rather flat. You're singing very well. The audience doesn't seem to think so. The applause was very half-hearted, I thought. Oh, the English are not a demonstrative race, you know. Why should we try to deceive ourselves, Mr. Harris? The truth is that I'm anything but a success. I felt from the very beginning that London isn't interested in a singer named Melba. Oh, it's too early to say that yet. Wait until they hear you in the mad scene. If that doesn't bring them to life, nothing will.
very well. Not well enough, I'm afraid. Oh, give them time, my dear. Wait until they become used to you. After another couple of performances... When? Oh, sometime later, perhaps next week. We'll try to arrange for you to replace Madame Albani one night in Rigoletto. Thank you. And if that isn't successful? Oh, then we must have another little talk. Good morning, madame. I'm glad you called in. Oh, why? Well, I've been wondering what we're going to do with you. Do with me, Mr. Harris? Your next appearance, um, it's uh, rather difficult. In what way? I'm trying to find something to suit you. Of course, you did very well as Gilles did the other night, but we can't keep asking Madame Albani to step down. In any case, I don't care to be Madame Albani's understudy. Oh, there was no question of that. But um, the unfortunate thing is that you're not a foreigner. What? If any foreign artist had come to London with your qualifications, she would have been received with tremendous enthusiasm. But you're an Anglo-Saxon, and something even worse from the operatic point of view... What's that? Uh, a colonial. In that case, I'd better start packing my trunks. Oh, no, no, it hasn't come to that. Yes. I'm going back to Brussels, Mr. Harris. They at least appreciate me there. Oh, they will appreciate you here, too, one day. They'll never get the chance. When I leave London, it'll be for good. I'll never come back. Never. Why have you come back? Because... Because I failed. Failed? I... What do you mean? <laughs> Stop crying, you silly girl, and tell me what has happened. They didn't like me, Marchese. They didn't want me. So I walked out. You? What? I told them I never wanted to sing in London again. I said I wouldn't come back, ever. Oh. And what is it you propose to do instead? I'll go back to Brussels. Back to Brussels? After what you did to La Piscita? Why, he wouldn't have you now. Especially after this London failure. Well, then... Then what am I going to do? I think you had better give up singing altogether. You have ruined all your chances of success. You have spoiled all my plans. You had better go back to Australia. Melba finds herself in a most unenviable position. Having walked out on two managements, she now finds herself without an engagement. And what is even more serious, without the prospect of an engagement. We'll hear how she coped with this situation in the next chapter of The Melba Story. The Melba Story was written by John Ormiston Reed and produced by Dorothy Crawford. The Australian Symphony Orchestra was conducted by Hector Crawford. The role of Melba was spoken by Patricia Kennedy and sung by the Australian coloratura soprano Glenda Raymond. <laughs>